Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you some Peltier cooling experiments again. So in this video I will try to answer some questions which popped up in the comment section under uh, different Peltier cooling videos of mine. And I will also try to explain some stuff just to make it more comprehensible. So what you see here is not a very difficult system. So I made a water cooling loop which is being cooled by Peltier coolers. Namely, I have six uh, TEC12706 uh, Peltier coolers and uh, these are cooling the water inside the, this loop that you see here. And then these six Peltier coolers are attached to two heat sinks, uh, some big aluminum heat sinks, and they are cooled by some uh, forced air. I use a high performance uh, fan which can provide like 6.5 thousand rpm and then that makes sure that uh, the hot side of the Peltier coolers uh, stay more or less cold. So what is happening here is the following. So let's let's start from here because it's easier to follow the hoses. So this is an 8 by 8 centimeter radiator and then on the other side I have a fan which is pushing the air in this direction, so towards the camera. And in the beginning I will not turn on the fan because if I turn on the fan then I push the room temperature air through the radiator and that will warm up the uh, water inside this uh, water cooling system. And I want to demonstrate something to you with this uh, thing that I do not start the fan in the beginning. But we have the cables, so I will just attach to these uh, clips here uh, during the experiment and we will see uh, what is happening. So, let's say we start from here and then the hose goes in this direction and the flow direction of the water is also this. So the water goes there and then it goes into that black box which is a tank, reservoir and a pump. So then the water comes out and goes through this pipe here and then it goes to this 12 by 4 centimeters aluminum water cooling block. So under this block we have the cold side of the Peltier coolers, three, and then the other side of the Peltier cooler is obviously the hot side, and then the hot side of the Peltier cooler is connected to this uh, roughly 15 by 8 centimeter by 4 centimeter, that's the height, uh, aluminum uh, heatsink, and then that heatsink is cooled by a huge uh, and high speed fan. So the water came in and then it is being chilled by this let's say first stage of the cooling uh, stages and then it leaves uh, this uh, cooling block and the water now is a bit more colder. So then it goes through this loop here and then it enters a second identical block. So again we have this 12 by 4 centimeter block here under that we have the cold side of three 6 ampere units, TEC12706, uh, and then uh, their other side, their hot side is attached to another uh, 15 by 4 or 15 by 8 by 4 uh, heatsink, and that is also being cooled by this uh, forced air. And then the water continues its way through this hose here, and then it enters this block which is just a flow indicator plus a thermometer. And the temperature will be displayed on this LCD here. So what we will see here is the outlet uh, water temperature, which will enter also this uh, radiator again. So then we uh, reached our starting point in this loop. So then what happens here is that if we turn on the fan, then of course we push through the ambient temperature air through the radiator and then that uh, ambient, ambient temperature air will be cooled down by the water inside uh, this radiator. And what we expect is that we will get uh, cold air exiting this uh, fan and uh, radiator. And this would be like the simulation of a sort of an air conditioner. So what we have is, is this split system is that we have the, let's say, interior system which is now a very tiny uh, radiator and there is a reason for that and you will see it why. So we have a very tiny radiator here and then 
we have this bigger system, which is, uh, let's say, the external unit. And that is where we sort of uh, remove the heat from the water, so it becomes cold. So what happens here, we have the cold water inside this uh, radiator. We push the room temperature air through the uh, radiator. So the room temperature air will give heat to the colder water. So then in the outlet, uh, warm water will go towards the uh, Peltier coolers. And then what happens at the Peltier coolers is by uh, force, so by running current through the Peltier coolers and using a Peltier effect and so on and so on, we remove that excess heat uh, from the water and put it on the heat sinks. And then we remove the heat from the heat sinks by pushing air, room temperature or ambient temperature air through, through the fins of the heat sink. And then that air will sort of transport the heat away. So that is how it works. So here we remove the heat from the uh, from the water and this should happen let's say outside of your apartment or your room and then this is inside your room where you remove the heat from your room by pushing the room's air through the fins or lamella of this radiator so this is roughly what is happening and then the problem is uh, first of all that we have these patio coolers and they produce a tremendous uh, amount of heat like like a lot, because each Peltier cooler uh, produces a lot of joule heat because they have to be running at a high current and high voltage, relatively high. Uh, and what I mean in this case is that each unit is roughly running at, let's say, uh, 4 amperes and uh, 15 volts. So that is already like 16, 60, 60 watts of uh, heat plus uh, they remove, uh, let's say, something between 20 to 40 watts of uh, heat from the water, ideal case, and this is just some uh, hand-waving uh, numbers. So we have this, let's say, 60 plus uh, 30 watts, so 90 watts of heat per unit, and we have six of that, so that is like 360 watts of heat, which ha has to be dissipated. And then... Uh, that that's that's like a lot of heat and we still not cooling too much and you will see it uh, uh, yourself with this experiment that uh, this is actually a quite uh, demanding task so what i will do here is i will start up the pump so i will push the water through this loop i already did some preliminary tests so the water might be a bit under ambient temperature and then uh, this thermometer We'll monitor the temperature of the heat sinks here. So I just pushed it into the heat sinks uh, lamella, and we will just check how hot the hot side gets. And then uh, I use this uh, multimeter with a thermocouple, and I just place this thermocouple in front of this uh, radiator. So when I turn on the fan, the airflow will cool down the thermocouple here and we will measure the outlet temperature and finally we measure the temperature of the water inside the loop by this uh, flow indicator plus uh, thermometer block and then uh, here this unit it's not too visible but that white thing is measuring the power consumption of my power supply which you can actually check how i built somewhere there in the corner so that's a two channel power supply with uh, two DC-DC converters uh, and they have also a power meter and everything so it's a fancy uh, laboratory power supply with quite good performance so that will provide some uh, juice and on the other side uh, we have this uh, fan so everything is assembled so what I will do now I will power up this thing and I will run roughly three amperes uh, through each unit so one uh, stage will experience 9 amperes because all of these Peltier coolers per side they are connected parallel so they experience the same current so roughly 3 amperes will run through each unit and then uh, we will see what happens first I just run the water without turning on the fan so I can even put this 
fires here just to show that nothing uh, funny is going on so there you go so then later on I will attach these cables to these connections 12 volts and then we will start introducing some airflow and uh, I put a watch here so we will be able to check the elapsed uh, time and we will see how this system behaves and I will just come back after like 10 minutes and uh, then uh, return to the experiment and explain everything because the fan is quite uh, loud so I'm not really willing to uh, wait for this but I show you how I start up the system so everything is turned off so I turn on this uh, extension cord and one of the power supplies uh, here this guy is already on so the pump is running and uh, that's all and also the thermometer is powered as you can see here and now you see the uh, water temperature is yeah let's say 25 degrees 24.7 so that's what we have and then I turn on this so this will be the heatsink temperature so once again it's just inside uh, the the heatsink lamellas and uh, I put it at the same uh, position where I have the hot side touching the heatsink so that's uh, arranged so now everything is okay and now it's uh, 7.22 so I start up the power supply and then I give some power to these uh, things after I turn on the fan so this will be loud so maybe I will stop talking So now the fan is running at the maximum uh, performance and it's mainly pushing the air out here upwards but it doesn't matter right now because uh, we will see what's the inlet and outlet uh, temperature and uh, just to check the temperature right now here It is showing 28 degrees, so this is our room temperature as well as here, as you can see. So now I set up the power supply to have uh, 3 amps per unit, so each side will uh, provide roughly 9 amperes. So now I set it up. So this side is uh, 13 volts, 9 amps, and this is 8 volts, 9 amps. And uh, that is quite a difference between the two sides regarding the uh, voltages. And I could not really figure out the reason, but uh, I leave it like this. And I can see that this power supply right now is taking up 440 watts. So it's a lot of power. So this is the time. So I come back in 10 minutes and we will see the temperature of the water, which is now 22.4. So it has been a bit more than 10 minutes. So now it's 736. And the temperature of the water is 13.2 degrees. Uh, this is the hot side temperature or the heat sink temperature 37 point something uh, that's quite okay and uh, the room temperature just to check it again 29 degrees so now I will try to attach I will try to attach the connections and then uh, we will have an airflow here so then I will wait another 10 minutes and see what will be the temperature here and what is the outlet temperature which we can sort of continuously maintain so this fan is on right now so I will try to rearrange the thermometers
so now the outlet temperature is getting down and it's now 20 degrees and I can feel that quite the cold air is coming out it's really nice but we also noticed that uh, the temperature started to go up here so now uh, so now it is 738 so let's wait 10 more minutes and see how the temperatures will uh, sort of uh, equalize so let's come back in 10 minutes so another 10 minutes passed we are st still running at the same uh, specifications and I can see that the power consumption of that box is 452 watts so quite a lot and uh, it's not only that that is eating the power but uh, we are also running the pump uh, running the fan and uh, running the other fan so something extra and now the water temperature is almost 20 degrees so it came up uh, nearly 6.5 degrees something like that and then uh, this is the temperature on the heat sinks roughly and then in front of the uh, outlet of this radiator so the air is coming in this direction it's uh, 23 degrees let's say so it is still lower temperature than the room temperature but it is noticeably higher than in the beginning so what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that as long as we turn on some kind of uh, forced air flow uh, the let's say cooling effect of the Peltier coolers is diminished because now we introduced a lot of heat in the system and then the Peltier coolers cannot really catch up with this and uh, we got a serious increase in the room in the water temperature so that is something that we have to consider and uh, maybe some people are satisfied with this 22 degrees air and it's not a very high air flow obviously I cannot push it uh, higher because then it will uh, heat up the water even more so this is something so if you sit close to it it might be nice but uh, otherwise it will not it will not cool down your room that's for sure so I turn off the things and I will discuss a bit more the water is still running in the in the water loop and the fan here is still running but now as I turn on the turned off the cooling uh, the water temperature is raising quite noticeably so now it's already 21.1 degrees uh, Celsius so it went up uh, 1.5 degrees now uh, by just turning off this uh, cooling here so within a minute and of course some heat is now going back from the heat sinks towards the Peltier coolers so through some heat conductivity uh, we also heat the water with, with the Peltier coolers and uh, the heat sink which is still above room temperature so 32.7 degrees Celsius so yeah once again I can tell the same as I said when the fan was running and everything was noisy uh, the problem is that when you turn on the fan there you introduce much more heat into this water loop and then the Peltier coolers will have a difficult time to uh, take care of that additional heat introduced uh, to the system so what you can do is for example double the size of this and of course then you double the, the cooling performance and you might be able to reach uh, lower temperatures or maintain lower temperatures because the maintenance of the temperature which is important here but uh, this thing, uh, let's say the wall system, already took up 500 watts of power and uh, it was not really a sufficient cooling so if you double this system then you will need uh, 1000 watts of electricity which is a lot but that's not only the problem but this thing generates a lot of noise and uh, you have to take care of the heat somehow on the on the uh, hot side part and of course if you want to transfer the heat uh, through the pipes and uh, everything you have to insulate everything you have to insulate the pipes otherwise uh, you will just warm it up by running through your room you will have to uh, isolate or insulate the, the water cooling block and so on and so on so it's a lot of messy work 
and it just uh, doesn't really worth it because uh, this system that you see on this table is roughly 300 US dollars uh, if it's not more and that is uh, already approaching the price of a AC uh, at least these small mobile ACs that you can buy for your room and if you double this then that's like $600 you can I think at least uh, you can buy a normal split AC uh, with the normal uh, high performance high efficiency and so on so yeah this is a very funny experiment but uh, it's a lot of mess and it just doesn't worth it uh, financially because it's not only that you have to buy all these parts especially the power supply needs to be regulated and that's an expensive stuff but also all, all these other parts the cables the connections and uh, everything has to be in a very uh, good uh, order so you have to good have uh, you have to have good fittings good connections for the wires because you don't want fire at your home and, and so on and so on so uh, when you will be able to put together a nice system using these kind of tools you can buy a proper AC and you will have much less uh, electricity bill because this is eating the electricity uh, so much that it's unbearable but still I wanted to make this demonstration to you so you can learn from this hopefully and you can uh, conclude the things yourself so I showed everything, I measured everything and I uh, explained everything uh, as much as I could do but if you have other questions uh, please uh, ask me in the comment section but uh, you can see already that this is a very difficult system and uh, it's not just like putting the things together, assembling everything and you have an AC so this is not how it works because the yeah let's say the physics behind uh, how these uh, Peltier coolers work and how the heat transfer is going on is uh, is not just a simple thing and you can see that after five minutes of ranting uh, about this topic uh, we already reached the room temperature inside uh, the water cooling block so of course now there is no cooling but uh, you could see that even the already cold water uh, loses its uh, yeah coldness quite quickly so this was the video uh, I hope that you could learn something and I really hope that you watched the, the video because uh, I think I uh, shared a lot of hints and ideas about uh, these kind of systems and hopefully you will not waste your money on these things. If you want to play some good experiments, yeah, it's a nice way to spend your money, but if you uh, think that you can have a nice air conditioner based on Peltier cooling, you are wrong and uh, you can see this by this example. So I hope that this video was useful, I hope you could learn something and see you in the next video.